Welcome to our day. Welcome to our day. So, before we start, I just want to point out that this EpiPen is not being wasted. This precise batch number has been recalled and plus is out of date, so you can't use it anywhere in an emergency, which is why we are using this opportunity to show you guys how to use one. Yay. I just wanted to clarify that so I don't want like people then commenting the end saying that I'm wasting a drug when actually it cannot be used. I have multiple allergies. I've got idiopathic anaphylaxis. I've got normal anaphylaxis. Mass cell activation syndrome, or disorder, whichever one wants to say, and spontaneous urticaria angioedema. So, so it's going to read out, we've taken it from that anaphylaxis campaign. Website. Yeah. And so it's just going to read what it says, because then we can't, although we know what to do if it was a situation with me. We don't really want to miss anything so we're going to read it just to make 100% sure we cannot get it wrong so here's what you do we're going to read the little paragraph that they've got at the beginning and then i'm going to go to the practical points that they've got so what to do in an, in an emergency if someone in if <laughs> go away <laughs> severe allergic reaction, it is vital that they receive an adrenaline injection. If they have their own adrenaline, this must be given as soon as a severe reaction is suspected to be occurring and an ambulance must be called immediately. If the patient is alone or is unable to self-administer, the adrenaline should be administered first and then an ambulance should be called immediately after. <laughs> Try to ensure that a person suffering an allergic reaction remains as still as possible. Preferably, they should be lying down and if they are feeling weak, dizzy or appear pale and sweating, their legs should be raised. When dialing 999, say that the person is suffering from anaphylaxis. Give clear and precise directions to the emergency operator, including the postcode of your location, if you know it. Most people though, if, like most people have a smartphone, so one thing you can do is you can either turn on your GPS on your phone and the ambulance service would get like a rough area of where you are. Or, if you've got, like, um, internet signal, if you go onto your map that's on your phone, it can tell you where your act, like, exact location is, and then that can help them as well. Yeah. If adrenaline has been given, make a note of the time that this was administered. A second dose can be given after five minutes if there has been no improvement. If the person's condition deteriorates after making the initial 999 call, a second call to the emergency services should be made to ensure an ambulance has been dispatched. Send someone outside to direct the ambulance crew when they arrive. However, I'm pretty sure that if, if it's you on your own with that person, yeah. you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, don't leave them if you are on your own. <laughs> and then it says, try to ascertain what food or substance may have caused the allergic reaction and ensure the ambulance crew knows this. 
That one, it, that one might be difficult. If you can't figure it out, it doesn't matter. Really no. However, if it's someone you know, and you know, for example, that someone is will have an anaphylaxis if they consume egg, then you know that has a high chance that whatever that person's eaten has some traces of egg. In it. So, for example, if if you know that person and you know what they're allergic to, then it will be easier. But as Charlotte said, if you don't know them and you don't know, then that's fine. <coughs> So the EpiPen that I have for this current one is called this. And it's it's really simple. The best place to give it is in like um, a person's leg because it has to go into the muscle. And not a lot of people have like really muscly arms. As far as I'm aware, as what I've been taught, it can go through any clothes but jeans. If somebody has jeans on, it's it's better to try and pull the trousers down. If it was me, I never put it through my clothes anyway. I always make my leg clear and do it in my leg because there is that risk that the clothes could stop the needle from going in and if that's the case then the injection's wasted because the needle's already been pulled out and it can no longer be used and I don't think the person suffering from the anaphylaxis is gonna be all that bothered if you expose their leg because you're saving their life so it, it's easier to just whack down their trousers to be honest um, we're going to be doing it on an orange, so that's another thing. I'm not going to randomly stab myself with a needle when I don't need it. And with this, I think they're pretty much the same as the yellow ones that you can get. They're in like this protective case, and all you do is you take it out. There is a ton of paperwork with it. If you're the person who has different illnesses that can cause an anaphylaxis it's wise for you to read this but if you're going to be the person giving the injection don't tell them hang on wait I just need to read this leaflet because on each pen whether it's this right company or whether it's a different brand or whatever it always comes up with showing what it is you've got to do and it's literally three simple steps. So you take that bit off with your orange. All you have to do is push it really hard into that person's leg. And it's got to be really hard because it needs to hit the muscle. Just being in somebody's fat isn't good enough. It needs to go into the muscle. So you just got to press it really, really hard and you'll hear a click and literally you just hold it for a few seconds and then just take it out again and it's as easy as that and Soph has how many if you if you give me one or two two or three I've definitely done two at least I remember the first injection that you gave me we were we were still living with her mum and dad at the time and the reaction that I was having was also triggering an asthma attack and I said to Sophie look you've just got stabbed me with it you've got to do it you've just got to do it and you were just like but where do I do it and I don't think I had chance before that point of really like telling you or showing you how to do it so it was quite a bit like culture shock for her to have to do it that first time and it it is it is a bit scary thinking oh my god i'm going to be stabbing someone but when you think of the alternative it's realistically it's either stab someone and say at least attempt to save their life or watch them die so way up to two options yeah yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> it, it really is simple though, you just pull the cap off and just dab it as hard as you can into somebody's leg. Yes. Um, one of the main reasons why I decided to show you guys this, it kind of worked perfectly in the sense that, like I said, there's been a recall on this one and it's out of date anyway. But I've seen a lot in the press, on the news, even on social media lately, that people with allergies are not being taken seriously enough. If they're in school, like senior school or something like that, and classmates are aware that somebody has a peanut allergy, for example, I've seen that kids have been bullied and had crumbs tipped on them and they've told them it's peanuts or people have per like purposely given somebody that the object that they are allergic to just to trigger because people feel that an anaphylaxis is not that serious they think that you're just gonna get come up with some hides and be really itchy a lot of people are not being aware that an anaphylaxis can kill you. Whether it is to an insect bite, peanuts or some other food or anything else, allergies aren't to be messed with. And whether it's the case that you've only had a minor reaction of having itchy skin or hives, that could be, if it was your first reaction, that could be the warning reaction for you. When I first started getting allergies, the different things I'd be allergic to, I would have that as my first reaction. And then the second time I would have it, I would go into full-blown anaphylaxis. Because the first time your body takes in that, like, food or whatever, and then it decides, hang on, I'm not happy with this, and starts reacting. It's like me and I... And, and you can develop allergies as well. So like, I, when I was younger, I never used to be allergic to penicillin, but I had penicillin um, about so a few point. years ago. Yeah, <coughs> and it was like full body reaction going on. Yeah, it. bad reaction. <coughs> so with Soph, that full body reaction was her warning reaction. So if she was to have penicillin again, she could have an anaphylaxis, although she has not had one yet, because her body has reacted once, there's nothing to say that it will not react again. So now every time she goes to the doctors or she needs antibiotics, she has to tell everybody, I cannot have penicillin products, because that next time it could be an anaphylaxis. So regardless of whether you have a minor reaction to something, or something as serious as an anaphylaxis. Allergies need to be taken seriously. And if you're being bullied because of having an allergy or some kids are, or even colleagues are not taking you seriously, you need to make like teachers or your boss aware because you can't risk having your life put in danger because of some idiots. It's how to tell if somebody is having an allergic reaction to it, but if you just think airways, breathing, circulation, think ABC, and then that can show you, like, you'll remember how to tell if something's happening in an allergic reaction. Yes. So, that's it for today's video. Tomorrow, we are releasing Hades Butterflies. Yes. Today, the last little bugger came out. So, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, because I came home yesterday. So come and join us for the butterfly release. Yay! But other than that, thanks for coming on this day with us, and we will see you tomorrow. Good night everyone!